Most people with autonomic problems will also find that they have immune problems and it's kind of a chicken or the egg, what gives? And it, the honest answer is it's heterogeneous. It can go either way. But there's a really interesting part to consider is that when we think about autonomic problems, they can go in kind of two main ways if we lump them in. Number one, we can have it become hyperactive, right? Where the autonomic system is overcompensating, becoming more active than it should be. POTS is an excellent example of this where it's trying to compensate by increasing the output to keep blood in your head. So we know that those two things are linked together. So there's a probability that in those cases, we might have hyperactivity of the immune system as well as we share some central drivers. And this might mean you're more likely to have problems that are related to autoimmunity or increased sensitivity to immune compromise. On the other hand, you might see the kind of the other side of that coin. That's where we get a hypoactive autonomic system where things don't kick in enough. There's too much latency. The response time is too slow. This is where we might see people passing out or fainting or feeling really sluggish or, or low energy. In these cases, the correlate to that may be that we also see the overlay between hypoactive immunity where the immune system just isn't strong it doesn't fight things off very well we see these kind of long chronic illnesses that get kind of extrapolated over time rather than having the immune system be able to deal with them quickly so um, can it go either way yeah do people have immune compromise of course that's just part of being a human but it may be helpful to look at how those two things interface and how we may be able to get some leverage on that in your life to understand how to work with these things better.